The idea of crypto, or the great achievement of Satoshi Nakamoto, is the concept of creating a truly decentralized network, giving it to billions of people, allowing people to, to uh, de in a decentralized way, protect that network, support that network, serve that network, benefit from that network, transcending the constraints of a CEO, a corporation, a country, a city, a company. According to a recent Credit Suisse report, around 47.8% of the world's wealth is in the hands of the top 1.2% of the world's population. Another 11.8% controls 38.1% of the global household wealth. Combine these 633 million, people control almost 86% of the world's total wealth. Most shocking is what lies at the base of the wealth distribution pyramid. It shows that 2.8 billion people, or 53.2% of the world's population, share only 1.1% of the total global wealth, which is just $5 trillion. In addition to the staggering financial inequality, power is also concentrated in the hands of a few. Top bureaucrats, heads of international organizations, leaders of powerful countries, and powerful business executives can change the lives of billions of people with only one phone call. So, what does the common person have? Who or what ensures that we are free of tyranny and complete dependence on existing institutions and corporations? That is the focus of Michael Saylor's keynote speech at the Atlas Society Gala. While delivering his speech, the MicroStrategy Executive Chairman discusses the current state of the world and the helplessness of the common person in today's world of surveillance, censorship, and utmost invasion of privacy. Please watch, share, and like this video as the former MicroStrategy CEO discusses the importance of Bitcoin in today's world. Also, be sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications, and drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. Today, we struggle with the challenge of authority. You know, Lord Acton said, absolute power corrupts absolutely. The only difference between absolute power today and absolute power 10,000 years ago is today we have a company that listens to everything a billion people say. We have another company that answers the questions that 4 billion people ask. We have companies that deliver the food and all of the goods that you need to survive to hundreds of millions of people. We have uh, one company that delivers all of the business software to 80 million corporations, indirectly serving billions and billions of employees. Now, I ask you the question, if you got ejected out of the third biggest country in the world, or if I denied you privileges to live in any of the five largest countries in the world, would your life go on? Probably. Now, what if you actually got canceled by Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Google tomorrow? The question is, would your life go on? What? Stop and think a little bit about what happens if they simply turned off your account, seized your photos, turned off your messages, took your documents. What if Microsoft just denied you access privileges? Could you run a business? Could you work? We figured out how to send millions of people to the new world and we spent millions of people west, but we couldn't send millions of people to the moon or Mars or the next habitable G-type star. So where is the next frontier for those thirsting for freedom? Cyberspace. And here I pause and I ask you to, like Steve Jobs said, think different. Thinking conventionally will get you killed. We will be martyrs, we will not be winners, right? If you wanna die for your country or die for your cause, you can, uh, you can uh, do that by thinking conventionally. If you want to win, you need to think unconventionally. We have to embrace new paradigms. In the 21st century, you can choose where to locate your body, your friends and family. You can choose where to locate your mind. You can spend your time on Twitch or Netflix or YouTube or Reddit or reading whatever you like. There's infinite. You can be wherever you want to be with any group you want to be in cyberspace in your head. You can also choose where to locate your business, your P&L. Where do you generate cash flow in order to pay your expenses? You want that to be a streaming YouTube channel. You want that to be a bakery on Venice Beach. 
you choose. There are consequences. And finally, you can choose where to place your wealth. That is, what will your bank be? How will you store your life savings? Every dime that you earn this year will be stored where? It doesn't, you don't have to work where you live and you don't have to think where you live and you don't have to store, if you live in Venezuela and you make money in pesos, or sorry, in, in Bolivar, or if you live in Argentina and you're making pesos, you don't have to save your pesos in an Argentine bank. You could choose to place your wealth in a different location than your business interests while your mind is in one place and your body is in another. In his speech, Saylor describes Bitcoin as a unionizing force that gives power to the powerless. Referencing Ayn Rand's 1957 novel Atlas Shrugged, Saylor explains that we, unlike John Galt, cannot shun society because of the staggering inequality, but we can remove our wealth from the control of the rich, powerful, and greedy. Let's get back to Michael Saylor's brilliantly worded speech as he discusses the importance of Bitcoin in today's world. What if we could create something which is truly utilitarian, egalitarian, economically and, and, and philosophically empowering computer network created on, on the strength of the power of cryptography? And cryptography is a machine with a mechanical advantage. Instead of a uh, a Roman construction crane with 180 to one mechanical advantage that lets you move a one ton, uh, a one ton block with your hands. We're talking about cryptography where it becomes billions or trillions of times harder to break the code than it is to create the code. It's a trillion to one advantage. It's a, it's a quadrillion to one advantage. If you can create a mechanical advantage in cyberspace, then you can create something which is going to transcend and beyond the reach of the collective. And you finally have a, a tool with which to fight back. Bitcoin is a shining city in cyberspace, and you can go there once you understand it. Bitcoin and objectivism, they have a common cause. Ayn Rand in 1959 said, I'm for the separation of, of the state and economics, just as we had the separation of church and state. Whereas uh, Hayek in 1984 said, I don't believe we, we shall ever have good money again before we take the thing out of the hands of the government. That is, we can't take it violently out of the hands of government. All we can do is by some sly roundabout way, introduce something that they can't stop. Clearly, both, both movements are thinking about separating economics from the state and from the collective. The difference is for thousands and thousands of years, the technology for doing that was imperfect. The technology of gold to separate the power from the state doesn't work when they just shoot you and take your gold. The technology of cows or tobacco or fiat currency or buildings, they don't work that well to separate economics from the state. So although this was an ideal and aspiration that we never had the technology to realize it. January 3rd, 2009 is the singularity. That's the point at which Satoshi Nakamoto developed the technology to transfer value through space without a trusted third party. Now, people say that a lot. They say he solved the Byzantine general's problem. But if you can transfer something of value through cyberspace without a trusted third party, that means you can manifest something of value in cyberspace without a trusted third party. That means you can create and store and transfer energy in the digital realm. The creation of digital property, digital money, digital energy and digital matter where there was therefore affected on January 3rd, 2009. Most people don't realize this, but Satoshi opened a portal from the physical realm into the digital realm and energy began to flow into cyberspace, bringing life to a formerly dead realm consisting only of shadows and ghosts, bringing conservation of energy and matter, objectivity, truth, time and consequence into the digital realm, delivering property rights, freedom and sovereignty that it's separate from the physical and the political realm to humanity. On September 18th, 
After fully adopting the Bitcoin standard and after talking to some more Bitcoiners, I had this epiphany. I went to Twitter and I posted the following. Bitcoin is a swarm of cyber hornets serving the goddess of wisdom, feeding on the fire of truth, exponentially growing ever smarter, faster and stronger behind a wall of encrypted energy. And I think Ayn Rand would understand what I was saying. What it means is for the first time in the human race, we have unleashed a freedom virus, a truth virus. We've un un unleashed a sovereignty virus, which is also a monetary virus. And as you know, and as Heinlein once said, the only way to fight a virus is with another virus. You can't take it on, you can't take it head on. Bitcoin is something special. Gold, uh, Galt's Gulch is the Bitcoin network. Rather than removing your labor from a corrupt economy, you should remove your money from a corrupt economy. Bitcoin's a protocol to create free ideas, free economies, and free assets beyond the control of corrupt institutions. It's a fast, fair, and equitable method to settle the differences of 8 billion people. We say in the Bitcoin world, fix the money, fix the world. Bitcoin fixes the money and the world. It is a tool that allows us to turn cyberspace into a new world filled with astounding possibilities for all. What are your thoughts on Michael Saylor's keynote speech? Please drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Also, ensure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Everything helps with the YouTube algorithm so we can continue to bring you these videos. Thank you for watching our videos.